Hey, you want to ask a question? Wait for the microphone <laughs> to come so that we can get it recorded for cameras and so on and say who you're from. That would be great. Yes, gentlemen here to start with. Benjamin Schaub, Estado de São Paulo, Brazil. Mr. Schaub, um, on power shift that you mentioned, I was wondering in the Latin American context if you have invited or if you are expecting anyone either from Venezuela, Ecuador or Bolivia since power shift uh, in that region uh, happened in this way and that uh, that is probably the best or the best example of a power shift in Latin America at the moment. Thank you. We have uh, the principal policy of the World Economic Reform is to invite uh, all governments uh, which are not under a UN uh, boycott or uh, UN restrictions just as a as a general policy. And in this respect, we have also invited some of the governments you just mentioned. We have a strong Latin American uh, participation, as you know. I just want uh, to refer again to the new president of Mexico, to President Lula. And President Lula will particularly talk, and I think this is uh, of, of, of specific um, Latin American and global interest uh, the Hangar initiative which he has undertaken. When he came at the beginning of his mandate to Davos, he informed the world of uh, this initiative. He is coming now back and uh, he wants to, uh, to, to present what progress has been made, what can be learned um, from the Brazilian experience and how can the integration or the eradication of uh, poverty particularly via the elimination of hunger, um, how can this Brazilian example be applied uh, to other countries? Okay. Uh, Lino Terlizzi, Swiss Television, Lugano. Mr. Schwab, if we look at the list of political leaders, maybe we can find less American political leaders than other countries. I mean, maybe as the last years, which is if it's true, which is the reason, in your opinion, and the second question related, uh, uh, we can find uh, uh, maybe only a few Italian political and economic leaders uh, in, uh, uh, in the list of, of the forum. And again, which is the reason, if it's true, in your opinion? I think uh, your first statement um, is in line of what I said before, the shifting power equation. We have... Um, uh, this move into a multi-power uh, global system. Uh, we concentrated last year particularly on China and India. Uh, this year you will see um, Brazil, uh, Russia, um, um, some of the Arab countries uh, and uh, Vietnam uh, some of the emerging, uh, let's say, behind India and, uh, and, and, and China, some of the emerging new uh, power uh, houses, uh, very well represented in Davos. Uh, as far as your second question is concerned, I regret very much the, the Minister of Economy, of course, uh, will be present in Davos, uh, but um, we regret very much uh, that uh, uh, Italy is not more involved. Of course, we have our own um, um, explanations about it. I feel that Italy, if you accept my personal interpretation, is too much preoccupied internally at this uh, particular moment. And uh, Davos is a place where you look at the world in general. But uh, I hope that Italy next year will be much more prominently uh, represented. And by the way, what I am saying about Italy, there are certain countries which I would have uh, liked to be stronger represented. Uh, and uh, here I'm speaking also of Spain and some others. But um, those countries are the exceptions. Um, as you see from the list, there is an excellent, uh, in principle, an excellent across the globe uh, representation in Davos from the public and private uh, side. Um, Rick, Rick, you just want to run us through maybe the, some of the U.S. Um, yes. people that are coming. Uh, a word of clarification on the United States. Actually, the uh, delegation is extremely impressive that's coming to Davos this year. There'll be 
uh, five cabinet uh, secretaries from energy, uh, homeland security, agriculture, trade, and labor are coming, as well as the number twos, in some cases number twos and threes of the Treasury Department, State Department, uh, and others. Uh, as a former uh, member of the U.S. government, I, it's hard for me to recall a time when such a broad, high level, broad and high-level segment of the, of the top echelon of government has gone to a single uh, meeting. Uh, in addition, there will be very significant uh, politicians, uh, legislative branch uh, officials in, uh, in Davos, uh, including some of the top uh, candidates for the next presidential campaign cycle in 2008, uh, Senator McCain, Senator Dodd, Senator Kerry of Massachusetts, uh, Senator Lott, who's the deputy Republican leader uh, in the United States Senate, and Senator Leahy, who is the new chairman of the Foreign uh, Operations Subcommittee, which is essentially the part of the U.S. Uh, legislature that writes the uh, budget for all international operations, whether they be military or foreign aid. So it's an extremely strong complement of top officials uh, from the U.S. coming uh, this year. Um, Patrick Barr from Agence France Presse. Uh, Mr. Schwab, I was wondering what, what you just said about Italy and Spain. Does that also apply to France, especially as the country is entering an electoral year? I was wondering if you had uh, invited any of the candidates and what was, what was their answer? Thank you. Uh, first, uh, France, as you see, is uh, very well represented. I think there are three, um, uh, three uh, uh, cabinet members uh, coming to Davos. We have a very good business participation from France, if you look at the list. Uh, as far as the presidential candidates are concerned, I am sure that we will have hopefully both. I mean, one will be president, the other one will be opposition leader uh, next year in Davos. But I think uh, neither the candidates nor ourselves would like to make out of Davos a beauty show in a pre-presidential uh, race. Igor Sidik, Congressman Daily Russia. At this time, Russia sends a very important delegation with the potential candidate for presidency and the chief of Gazprom, Mr. Medvedev. What do you expect of the Russian participation in this forum? Russia, um, as we all know, has a a uh, very important role to play in uh, geopolitics and geoeconomics. I just refer to the issue of energy supply security uh, for Europe. So we are very pleased uh, that we have uh, a strong involvement from the government side, as you said, with one of the uh, presidential candidates for the elections in 2008, uh, but also he is accompanied by a number of uh, key ministers like Minister Greff, uh, the Minister for Communications and Telecommunication and so on, uh, the Mayor of um, St. Petersburg, and actually uh, I am pleased to announce uh, that we um, have uh, just signed a memorandum of understanding and uh, you know that there is a, since several years, I mean, maybe Peter, you may say something, you have negotiated the contract. Um, <clears throat> every year for the last 10 years, uh, the Russians have an international economic summit in St. Petersburg, <clears throat> where they explain to the world the strategies of Russia, both strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Um, it was the wish of the President Putin that the World Economic Forum would be more involved <clears throat> in order to make sure as well that our CEO members get to know Russia better. So this year we will join forces together with St. Petersburg and the World Economic Forum will collaborate both on the program and our members will join the St. Petersburg Economic Summit in June this year with the objective for have a good discussions with the Russians about international strategy. The discussions will start in Davos and then will lead into this summit in June. So we will, you see the, the participation is the beginning of a closer long-term cooperation. Uh, Lisa Schlein, Voice of America. I noticed that you have several uh, Middle Eastern leaders. You didn't mention anyone from Israel. I don't know who might be coming from there. But in the past, uh, Davos has been 
the uh, venue for some political breakthroughs. Uh, are any Israeli leaders coming? Is there likely to be some kind of um, private negotiation going on there? And in terms of uh, continuing with the Middle East, since Iraq is at the center of so much turbulence that is going on and possible future turbulence that will be going on there, how will you handle that? Are you planning to have any kind of a big uh, panel discussion or uh, sideline discussions on this issue? I personally feel that the Middle East issue is the most crucial issue for the world at this uh, particular moment. And in this respect, uh, we pay uh, the necessary attention to the region. Um, I would like to draw your attention uh, particularly to three sessions. Um, as far as the uh, Palestinian-Israeli issue is concerned, uh, we will have not only, as um, my colleague mentioned, President Abbas in Davos, but also the Israeli uh, Foreign Minister, um, uh, we will have um, uh, Mr. Perez in Davos uh, and some other representatives of the uh, Israeli government. We will have a session on, on the situation in, in, um, uh, or related to the relationship between the Palestinians and the Israelis. Um, we have done something um, um, which is uh, uh, probably um, extraordinary. We have conducted, um, as an input into this session, three town hall meetings, each attended by um, about three to five hundred people, young people from both sides. We organized such meetings in Tel Aviv, in Jerusalem, and in Ramallah. Um, uh, it's an input under the heading, enough is enough, and we will see what the outcome uh, is. We have a second session with, uh, which is important uh, with the Prime Minister of Lebanon. As you know, there will be the Lebanon um, Reconstruction Conference in Paris. Um, uh, just parallel to the beginning of the annual meeting in Davos, and the Prime Minister, after his discussions with the um, um, different governments in Paris, will come to to um, to Davos to inform uh, the audience about what's happening in in in, in um, the Lebanon and to solicit the support of the business community uh, for the reconstruction of the Lebanon. And finally, um, very important, Iraq. Uh, what we have done is uh, to assemble in Davos uh, top representatives from all the different fractions. I think it's very important uh, to maintain the dialogue amongst those fractions. So we have the two, um, you see all the names in, in your material, I think, we have the two um, uh, vice presidents, uh, one Shiite, the other one Sunni, um, and we have the vice uh, prime minister who is uh, a, a Kurd, uh, and we have some other representatives of uh, the, the uh, Iraqi government. So we assume that um, there will be quite a lot of interaction going on related to um, Iraq. My name is Ravi Kant. I represent an Indian newspaper. Mr. Schwab, do you think this shifting power equations, does it undermine or strengthen globalization? And just second question, last year India was everywhere at Davos. This, this year it looks India is nowhere. Is there any reason? Um, to start with your second question, India will be still everywhere uh, because uh, if, if you look at the participants list, uh, you see A, that the government is represented by its top economic team, and B, that the business community, I think if you take the 50 largest companies in India, uh, probably 80% are represented by uh, the CEO. What is happening? What is happening and what, I mean, we cannot, uh, we are not so ambitious, frankly, to say uh, during Davos, everything um, has to stop in the world. So, um, 
as you know, there is your national day um, exactly during the annual meeting. And it's a tradition in, 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 in India that for your national day there is a prominent foreign visitor. So this means, so, so prominent foreign visitors this year is uh, President Putin. So this means that uh, with all our best will, uh, the Indian Prime Minister and President Putin are just out during the time uh, of Davos. But let me repeat, uh, so there is in no way given less attention uh, to India, much to the contrary. And uh, the first question was related, I'm, I'm sorry again. I think it will make the, um, what is the shifting power equation in, 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 in essence? I think it's empowerment of people. And uh, if this year is a very special year for two reasons. First reason was mentioned by uh, Chet Davis. I think for the first time there are more people living in big cities than in rural areas in the world. And 2007 is also the year where the population which uh, have uh, uh, global connection through a mobile phone reaches 2 billion people. Uh, so uh, what we will have is a stronger voice of people uh, in the globalization process. And um, I think uh, what we at the Forum, uh, we always have propagated uh, globalization with a human face. I, I just would like to remind you, it's now just uh, uh, over 10 years that I was one of the first ones who wrote an article on editorial with the title um, "Globalization: Make Globalization Sustainable by Giving It a uh, Social uh, Dimension. And I think uh, the empowerment of people um, will lead uh, to a more sustainable global, uh, globalization process. Uh, Alexander Higgins of Associated Press. I seem to recall that in the past you've been able to add a major participant between this press conference and the actual forum. Is that in the cards this year? Is anything still pending? No, I think we have. Uh, do you still expect um, uh, Angelina Jolie in Davos? Or, uh, no, no. Uh, we, we had maybe, maybe uh, one... Uh, one person who, who has, had confirmed uh, was uh, the governor of California. But as you all have read, uh, he had a ski accident, so I hope he will be with us next year. But I think we have such a good cast now, uh, such a good participation, so I, I don't see anybody um, who will be added uh, in between. Yes, uh, John Zarakostas, freelance. Uh, Mr. Schwab and other members on the panel there, I was wondering who will be attending uh, in Davos from central bankers and how much the uh, global imbalances in the uh, global economy will be a focus of attention. I quickly saw there's no one from the IMF. Uh, could you elaborate who will be attending from the bankers? Yeah, maybe answer that in part and I can give you more specific information afterwards if you wish. Uh, Monsieur uh, Trichet will be in Davos. Um, there, the first uh, deputy managing director of the IMF, John Lipsy, <coughs> will be in Davos. Uh, there will be a number of other central bankers there as well, from, particularly from emerging markets. There are some key ones. Uh, and on your question regarding global imbalances, to the contrary, there's quite a specific uh, interest and focus on that, so much so that the, the forum will be re uh, releasing in Davos next week the final report of a two-year project that's been undertaken uh, in cooperation with uh, the G20. Uh, in the last couple of years, we've had seven public-private roundtables and a research program uh, of about 50 different uh, discussion papers by many of the world's leading experts on international monetary reform, which has essentially taken a look at the international financial architecture and how it can be best adapted to uh, the shift in the weight of economic activity around the world outside the G7 on the one hand and the much larger role that uh, 
private capital flows play in the international financial system. Uh, that uh, that uh, final report uh, has in it a, a range of papers, including some from officials, central bankers and finance ministers. Uh, and as I say, we will be discussing it in, in Davos and releasing it publicly uh, there. It has some very specific uh, discussions, analyses, and recommendations on the imbalances question. And you should maybe add that the president of the World Bank, as well as the presidents of all regional development banks, will be in, in Davos. Uh, Boris Engelson, a freelancer. Uh, concerning the topics and the choice of topics, what is your process for choosing the topics? What have been the discarded topics this year, the main ones? Uh, what uh, I assume that a consensus must be reached to select a topic. Uh, are bad topics offered for free to the open forum? And what kind of interest participants express beforehand for the topics? Do they try to get a lot of information on the topics to come? Is, has it an impact on the participation, etc.? Let, let me run through the process. I mean, at the end of, uh, of Davos uh, last year, the first thing to do is to review what went on, have a look at the discussions, what were the issues perhaps that arose that we haven't covered, I think secondly, we have scouting teams that go out right through to the middle of the year and we engage with our members, we engage with uh, our partners and most importantly the scouting teams will go out on their own networks, come back with ideas and I think it's fair to say we do that without any judgment as to what might or might not work. We're interested really in trying from many, many different areas to, to take signals and to take a view of what's going on. Let's also be clear, the global agenda doesn't suddenly arise in one year and change the next. When we have different themes, in my view, it's because we're exploring different aspects of a, the same problematique. So in 2005, we laid out the global challenges. In 2006, the enduring aim was to say, if you want to tackle these, you better be much more creative the creative imperative. This year we're saying you need to be very cognizant of the fundamental shifts that are underway which are much clearer to see because you cannot actually adequately address those challenges unless you do it in the context of the reality of these changes. Once we get a view as to what the thematics are and the structure, the challenge then is to come up with very specific sessions. And that's a process that the annual meeting team, my colleague Jonathan Schmidt, who's here, um, have done, I think, a very, very good job on. And we, again, try not to say, well, this is too political or too difficult. The reality is, as we get closer to Davos, we really have to see this not just as topics and ideas. It has to end up as a session with people. It has to have what I would call bite. It has to matter. It has to be important and relevant. And of course, as we go through the process of getting people, we can't always get the people we want. We can't always get them on the same day. Some people uh, will arrive on, uh, say, Thursday and leave later, although this, this time in Davos, um, many more people are going to be in Davos for the whole period. So I think this is a process um, and of evolution. It carries, but it's shaped strongly by the thematics and it's straight shaped quite strongly by what goes on outside. With one cor uh, point to add, we do our own work here. The global competitiveness work, the global risk work, the focus scenario work, the work with our industry groups, the work, for example, on the future of digitalization. All of this shapes our own mind as to what's important. Um, and that's really what leads to the notion of what the program is and is the starting point to shape the global agenda for this year. I think it's very important to add here, it's an academic process primarily. I'm coming from the academic world. Most of our people have a, a, a training in the academic uh, world and it's not a political process. We have, uh, of course we look what is the agenda of other organizations so we want to be really uh, up to date but it's in general 
an academic process underlined uh, through what we are doing with the competitiveness report, what we are doing with the global risk report. And you may, uh, you may load down the uh, global risk report from our website. I think this gives you the best, the best uh, impression of the intellectual work which is behind the program of Davos. Very, very quick questions. We've run out of time. Gentlemen there and gentlemen here, if we can have those two questions, and I'm afraid that we stay on the Some of them will be in around to answer your questions afterwards. Um, so, gentlemen there. <coughs> Mohamed Sherif, Suisse Info. Monsieur Schwab, l'image que vous avez adressée du monde, c'est une des rares images un peu négatives, parce qu'on on était habitué au moins... L'image que vous avez adressée du monde, c'est-à-dire euh, que vous avez brossé du monde, euh, de la situation actuelle, est une des rares euh, euh, images négatives données par le forum de Davos avant le lancement de... de parce qu'on était habitué au moins à un espoir, à beaucoup plus de, de motivation pour aller vers le meilleur. Mais cette image-là est aussi celle que le Forum Alternatif avait toujours euh, prévenu, qu'on allait vers cette situation-là si on continuait avec les mêmes doctrines, avec les mêmes, euh, les mêmes orientations. Est-ce un signe de maturité de votre part et un honnêteté on, on intellectuelle pour reconnaître que le juste milieu serait le mieux pour l'humanité Ma deuxième question The forum, uh, the World Economic Forum, I think we are not influenced or our program is not a reaction uh, to some other organizations. Uh, um, and I, I didn't catch really, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't really catch the essence of your question. You mean that we are much more pessimistic about what's happening? I, in, this yes. case, in this case, I would say, no, we are very concerned. We are very concerned, and I use the word uh, schizophrenia. I mean, we always, we always, if you go back in our programs, um, many, many years, you will see that it was always our task to, to shake up the world and to bring up um, issues to the agenda, um, such as the environment, such as social responsibility, and so on. Um, so, this is not something new, it's not something which ha happens as a reaction to anybody. Thank you. And last question, very briefly, I'm afraid. Oh, Professor Schwab, I was totally shocked when you said that Angelina Jolie is not coming. <laughs> and uh, what I noticed, uh, there are two singers, Bono and Peter Gabriel, um, when usually, I mean, in the last few years, there were much more showbiz world represented. So would you like to make it more serious this time? No, uh, when we, I, I think we were misunderstood uh, when we invited uh, some people from the show business. We didn't invite them, and we don't need such invitations, uh, to go into the show business. We invited them because uh, they were affiliated to some of the courses which were close to us and whom, which we wanted to promote in, in Davos. And uh, this year uh, it happens to be just Bono and Peter Gabriel um, and I think it's right, so. Thank you very much to our five celebrities for being here today. And um, for those going to Davos, I look forward to welcoming you. For others, please do follow the forum on our web blog, on our 